Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how I built a carbon monoxide sensor that literally had me bugging for several days before I get it to work properly. A carbon monoxide sensor is really beneficial when you have a source of heat in your house, something like a stove, a wood burning stove, or as in my case, I have a pellet burning uh, boiler that I use to heat up the house in the winter. So I wanted to have a way to measure the carbon monoxide in the room where the boiler is because it's um, getting air from within the room. So there is no outside exhaust. That's the way how it's built. So I wanted to have a way of monitoring the carbon monoxide buildup so I can tell if I need to open any more windows or if I need to make a draft or something to uh, clean up the air. And also because the device also has a temperature and humidity sensor, I can also monitor the state of the room that there is. The device is made out of three components, brain and everything controlling it is the Node MCU. Then you have the MQ7 carbon monoxide sensor and a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. They're all connected and running to my home assistant system within ESP Home. The interesting part is that there are plenty of tutorials about uh, the MQ7 sensor online that you can follow and then get a measurement. But based on its data sheet, the sensor needs to be run at 5 volt for one minute. Then it needs to be run in 1.4 volts for a minute and a half. And only then you need to take a measurement of the seal levels. Because the way that this works, you have a heater that heats the measuring element inside and then to release any carbon monoxide that it has built up. And then once it cools off, then it attracts uh, the carbon monoxide and that changes the resistance. And this is how we we can measure the levels of the CO2 in, in the air in parts per million. The modules, as they come, they only allow you to provide power constantly to the heater and do the measurements like that. That would probably also work in situation where you just want to have an alarm or something like that going off when when you have a buildup of carbon monoxide. But I wanted to have a more precise and a more proper way of knowing the current uh, CO value in the air. So. I researched a bit and I stumbled upon an article from ESP devices where a conversion of this module was already presented where you would change few components, add a MOSFET or a transistor as I added in my case. So in that case, instead of having a digital output, you would convert that uh, one of the pins to be digital input that would lower or raise the voltage of the heater based on some resistors and a resistor divider that uh, is created with that. So I started the conversion and originally I didn't have the exact same module with the MQ7. So it was proving tricky to track where all the traces go, especially because the original PCB was actually black. So I couldn't see all of the tracks um, under the components and how they are connected. So I gave up on that and I bought the other module where I was able to properly and successfully follow the conversion instructions as per the article. Uh, speaking of PCBs, I'm really happy to share that this video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a leading manufacturer of PCB prototypes and PCBs for your final versions. I use their services for all of my prototypes and you've seen me already doing projects with all of the boards that were manufactured by PCBWay. And if you visit the link down in the video description, you can get $5 off from your first order. And not only for PCBs, PCBWay also provides some 3D printing services and CNC manufacturing. So you can get basically everything that you need for all of your prototypes. I won't go into too much detail how the conversion is done because it's greatly explained in the article that I'm going to share down below in the video description. But all in all, you will need to remove the potentiometer and the op amp from the board and that will disable the digital output and then you would need to cut few traces add few resistors and also add the mosfet so you can convert that uh, digital output into 
um, heater enable pin that would allow it to change the applied voltage to the heater of the of the MQ7 sensor so we can have proper measurements. And because of how the sensor operates, it is required that we do some calibration of it. And we do that by placing the sensor outside for a few hours. Recommended is that you leave it for at least two or three days even, maybe even more. So you let the sensor stabilize and all the readings to stabilize. So you get the compensated resistance uh, in open air and that would hopefully give you better and more precise uh, measurements uh, in the end product. Uh, once I was happy with everything and how I had the sensor, I took one of my electrical boxes that I usually use for projects and I made sure to put everything inside. I used the rubber grommets for the cables to place the sensor and I also made sure to leave the DHT11 outside so it can measure the temperature outside and humidity outside and not get bothered with any heat produced by the microcontroller within the enclosure. And everything is held nice with uh, with hot glue. Currently, I don't have the microcontroller secured, but because of the stiff cables, it won't go anywhere. And if it, if it doesn't expect too much uh, vibration, it should be perfectly fine. The code that uh, run the device can be found also on the ESP Home Devices website. I modified it a bit in uh, my case because the code expects that you would uh, already have a temperature and a humidity sensor within the area that you're adding the carbon monoxide filter. I didn't, so I also added a section in my uh, code to have a DHT sensor uh, that would measure the temperature and would measure the humidity. And I could also then use those temperature and humidity values within the calculations. To be honest, I'm not really sure how those calculations are being done and where all the values are gotten from, but from what I've seen, it seems to do a nice job uh, in testing. When I had the device on my bench, I tested it with uh, using a, a candle. After the calibration was done, I light up a candle and covered it together with the sensor with a glass jar that would burn up all the oxygen and hopefully produce some carbon monoxide in the process. And I was then able to measure that successfully uh, where the parts per million rose up uh, significantly. And basically that's really what I'm interested in in measuring because if for some reason at my pellet stove, if something happens and there is a leak or something, or there is no uh, fresh air recently, I want to be notified so I can go in and open some windows and resolve the issue instead of being poisoned by the gas. Now, beside the challenges that I had in converting the sensor and converting the PCB, beside the SMD soldering challenges, just before recording this video, the sensor decided to just stop working. The resistor, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but all along I had a different capsule here from the initial sensor that uh, actually this one was on this uh, this board but for some reason it decided to stop working and the resistance that was measured across the coil by the sensor to calibrate it was like four mega ohms so I knew that something was wrong and I tried tracing all of the connections everything seems to be fine and I even I was suspecting one of the resistors on the analog um, input on the node MCU, so I replaced that as well. But finally, something happened with the with the MQ7 sensor itself, so I had to replace it with the one that was on the original board that I failed to convert, and that seems to have fixed the issue. Although I'm not really sure into the measurements uh, yet, I'll need to investigate a bit more and figure out if those are uh, the correct ones. But if you have any idea of what might have happened, then please let's discuss it in the comments. Let me know if you have any idea what might have happened. I suspect that it might be a mechanical issue of some sort, if I pressed it too hard over here, if it happened to bang on the bench. We'll see, I don't know. As I said, if you have any idea, make sure to leave it down in the comments. So overall, this was a uh, 
fun and interesting project. It uh, really provided quite a lot of challenges and quite a lot of issues to tackle. To power it on, I'm again using a phone mobile charger that I've added a uh, female header at the end of the wires and I'm plugging it directly to the VN and the ground pins on the node MCU. And the final touch would be to add the cover, add the appropriate sticker, and I can place it next to my pellet heater so we can start monitoring. If you're interested in updates on how the sensor works, ask me in the comments and I'll provide feedback and I also might revisit this depending on how the MQ7 behaves. Once I have more data and once I start using it within uh, my home, if you happen to like this video, make sure to like it below. Make sure to subscribe for any updates on the sensor and on other projects that I'll do in the future. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.